I want to welcome everybody to the Atherton Town Council meeting for February 19th, 2014. I'd like everybody to stand and do the pledge of allegiance. evening with a presentation by the Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space District Vision Plan Update Potential One Measure. Uh, and I know I'm going to. Yuriko Kishimoto. Kishimoto. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, uh, I'm as introduced, my name is uh, Yoriko Kishimoto. Um, I'm a board member of the Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space. and. Some of you may remember my uh, service on the Palo Alto City Council as mayor of Palo Alto um, about five or six years ago. Um, so thank you for making time on the agenda for a very brief um, uh, update on the vision plan and our um, coming bond measure. So um, the mid of Regional Open Space, MidPen, we call it, um, it just celebrated our 40th anniversary a couple years ago. And I'm always inspired by the vision that, that the founders um, brought, um, the, three, the three missions. Um, and, and these are the missions that, that guide our activities every day. And, and they are to acquire uh, a regional belt, green belt of open space in perpetuity, to protect and restore the natural environment, and provide opportunities for ecological, ecologically sensitive public enjoyment and education. And those are our board members. So, um, so thanks to your support, over the last 42 years, we've acquired six, 62,000 acres, and we've uh, built 220 miles of trails, and we maintain, maintain those, um, and receive millions of visits, visits every year. I hope that um, some, many of you come out to enjoy our, our trails and open spaces as well. So these are some of the benefits that we bring to the region. Um, quality of life, uh, obviously, um, um, supporting a healthy lifestyle, um, clean air, clean water, and um, really stunning, stunning business. I, I believe that, I mean, I hope that you agree with me that, that our open space helps to make the Bay Area um, world class. So having uh, reached that 42nd um, anniversary, we, um, our board did uh, launch into a vision plan um, based on both science and public input. So we had a great science panel um, um, make recommendations on the areas that needed um, the most protection and uh, we reached out to over 2,000 uh, residents through meetings and Field, field trips um, and uh, websites. Um, and as a result, we came up with this list of about 52 priority actions. So to help, help guide our investments over the next uh, you know, 30, 40 years. Um, and you know, some of them are to open up land that we own. Almost half of the land actually are not open because we don't have the funding to develop all the parking and, and trails. Um, and some of them are out to the out, out, out on, the, on, the, on the coastline to um, to the, allow grazing to be, to return and be um, um, coexist with with open space. I guess a little bit closer to us, there's um, uh, Cooley Landing. Um, I don't know if you've been out to the new area that we've opened up. Uh, the Windy Hill. We hope to see some improvements. And, um, and one thing we learned over the process is that we do have over, overwhelmingly positive support for local organizations <coughs> which has, has supported us. And they believe that we are beneficial to the region as I hope you, you do as well. So that led us to, um, the board just voted just this month to um, say in response to this, to this public support and, and interest that, um, that we, knew that we do need a little bit more support. 
um, for the last 42, in the last 42 years, this is, yeah, so this, this is the very first time that we're going to the public for additional funding. And what we're asking for um, is, is fairly, quite modest. Um, yeah, it would be expected to bring in $300 million. Um, and the uh, taxpayers would be asked to, to pay up to $3.18 per $100,000 uh, assessed value. So if it's a million dollars, it's um, $31 a year, um, and uh, et cetera. And um, it, it would be uh, over the next uh, 30 years, and the funding would basically go for the projects that you saw. You saw well, you, you saw 52 projects. We boiled them down to 25 of the top priorities, and those those comprise our, our, um, our expenditure plan. And of course, we um, we will have a public oversight committee to oversee the, um, the, the the spending according to what we promise. And I'm happy to come back and, and report to you in time as well. So um, uh, so it, so we have overwhelming support, but we do need to reach two thirds support. So every vote counts and. Um, I'm here to, um, you know, ask for your support. I don't know if your council wants to um, support us as a council, or I, I'll be. I, I'd love to follow up with you individually um, to ask for your endorsement. But and of course, everyone here in the audience as well. So, um, so let me take any questions if you have if you have time for that. Any questions from council? I have a question. Yeah. Um, what is the uh, structure of the public oversight committee? It'll be uh, seven members um, appointed by the board, and um, it'll be, uh, I, I probably, it'll be one person per the seven wards, or seven wards that seven of us and board members would do, so. So I have a quick question. Um, so the, the 25 priority actions and goals that are in the handout, those are your top 25 that has been getting from the 54. Yes, and are there uh, dollar amounts of, uh, associated to each of these already um, to come up to the 300 million <coughs> over 30 years? And okay, and then another question is, um, is I haven't read each one of these, but is there funds for additional acquisition? It does say, um, for and land acquisition, yes, right? And yes, yes. is that in this 25 uh, point uh, list also? That's right. Um, there are um, there are estimates attached to those, um, and, uh, and and that's what that's what the public oversight committee will be reviewing as well. But but the board does have discretion, and I mean if if prices you know um, prices change, um, uh, well, for example, we're not we're not. Um, uh, there are some projects which we may not be able to do because of CEQA issues, or there's, mm -hmm. there, we haven't we haven't done CEQA for these projects yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we have there's a, there's a number of steps that we need to go do do for each one. Mm -hmm. But so things circumstances may change, so the board has some discretion. And and in, in response to your second question, um, yes, I mean that the three hundred million dollars would in, include some strategic. And you anticipate uh, this getting to the voters in a ballot measure? That's right. Uh, June 3rd, uh, 2014. Coming, coming right up. Yeah. So and you have already included, yeah. filed for the bond measure application? Um, we're just about to. We're, we've done the first reading, and we have a second reading coming up uh, okay. next week. Okay. So you've been privately funded. I mean, I've been a measure. I've contributed. Yes, you know, as a taxpayer, as, a ta yes. as an individual, you know, yes. just uh, as contributions and everything. So, what's your annual budget um, um, from contributions so far? Well, so so our um, so our annual so we, we do get uh, property tax every year already, mm -hmm. and this would be in, in addition. So this um, so what this would pay for is the capital the uh, the ability to um, to do projects that uh, more pro projects as so our um, annual budget um, is about it's about 40, 41 million actually, including that includes all the land acquisition and um, as well as the property, the property of the 62,000 acres. Wow. So does the staff um, get paid? It's it's their paid positions. Yes. For staff. And that's how many staff? There's about um, we're coming up on 120. Uh -huh. Yes. Perfect. More than half of which are. Field staff, our rangers, and our trail builders. Uh, yes. So let me. So this 
This increase would be three hundred million a year. No, 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 over the no in total. Three hundred million is a bond. Bonds. And it's so but if we we could we, we, we could issue it all at once, but we don't expect to because we can't. Evidently, <coughs> we need to spend it within three years. So, so we can't. Uh, we will we'll issue it over a, a number of. Uh, so the issues. rate that's not a property tax rate. <coughs> that's property tax. Um, it's a it's a cap on on the maximum tax that that. That would be would be applied to tax and it would be a property tax. It would be a property tax. Yes, assessed yes. for for hundred thousand assessed value. Based on assessed value. Can That's you right. tell us what we're currently being assessed? Uh, yes, uh, seventeen dollars per hundred thousand. Seventeen dollars per hundred thousand. So this would kind of bring it up to twenty dollars per hundred thousand. That's right. Perfect. Right. Councilman Barry. Nope. Thank you very much. How much longer is the current bond? How many more years is that? Well, we so this is the first uh, GO bond, oh, general right. obligation bond that we're okay. the rest of. We have issued um, bonds based on our this our regular uh, income as well, but this is our first GO first bond year. that we've gone out to the public for. So if you have land that's not already opened and you're going to use this, then um, and there's land that you're planning on opening for more grazing <coughs> and things like that, how much more land are you planning on acquiring? I realize they're not making any more land, and they've yes. got to look strategically, but, yes, that's right. um, but when, you, when there's not, you can't use what you've got, you don't have funding for it, what would, what's, what's your strategic plan? Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, well, that's why we did that um, vision plan, and, and that is a question we are, we, are, we are asked quite often. I mean, if we have, um, and, and it's not just us, there's, there's some kind of concerns, and such, so we're not the only ones out there. So what is um, so we did the vision plan to see um, you know give you know give so I mean I kind of think of open space one of the roles of open space is uh, the ultimate infrastructure in a way that they that you know they provide the water the clean water clean air the kind of the backdrop of, of this vibrant you know uh, Silicon Valley that we all live in and um, and so definitely completing that that green belt at the top. Um, we looked at like strategic uh, water watersheds that we want to protect for our creeks, um, and um, then of course we looked at we look at vistas. Uh, you know, kind of these stunning vistas. That, <laughs> so, um, so even the sixty-two thousand acres that we've acquired, they're, they're not just any sixty-two thousand acres. They're really sixty-two thousand off some of the most spectacular pieces of land that we have in the Bay Area, and um, they are you know kept kept for the public. And Future. But you so, don't have a plan specifically. We do. Uh, we do. That's uh, that is the okay. uh, that's the map that I. This is basically it. Um, so, so this is uh, the other fifty-two. Well, this, is, this might be the twenty-five that we came down to. Mm -hmm. So that um, triggered another question I have: Is that how do you overlay with the uh, Peninsula Open Space Trust uh, group because oh. they've got. Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, thank you. I mean, I'd love to see an overlay of theirs and yours and how that comes together. Well, thank you for asking that because, yeah, POST is, is our, our indispensable um, sister organization. Right. And MIT can actually have a role in um, its creation. Mm -hmm. um, they're all, they're maybe just one or two years um, younger than we are. Mm -hmm. So they're our sister organization. So they do um, a lot of private fundraising. Um, and sometimes they're they're just sometimes they're more nimble, and they're actually their geographic um, fit uh, oh, um, boundaries are much larger than ours. They they go down to Santa Cruz, they go up to closer to San Francisco, and um, they're you know they have a big board of uh, directors, and so we work hand in hand with them. Sometimes they'll go in and they're able to acquire land that we are not able to, and sometimes we take we buy that land from them later, and sometimes they sell it to GJ. Or some yeah, yeah. and so they're kind of this, um, you know, the venture capital, I suppose, of the, of the, of the open space trust. <coughs> and we, yeah, we work with them. They're they my money too, because we support them too. Oh yes, well, well thank you so much. <laughs> oh. Perfect. Okay, great. Very so, worthy. Yeah, so I hope I hope I can uh, follow up with you and, and yeah. ask for your individual. Great. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank, thank you, you for coming this evening. Get this. Thank you again. Okay, we'll move on to item number four. Any public comments for any items that are not on today's agenda? 
say amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seeing none. Oh, we do. Oh, I'm sorry, Phil. <coughs> ago, Measure W passed by about 82 percent of the voters, and four years ago, Measures S and T passed with about 80 percent. Last year, Measure X passed with a little over 72 percent of the 2,000 votes cast. However, the, dif the difference between 66 percent failure and the 72 percent that they won by is only six and a half percent of the 2,000 votes, only 130 votes, and that is too close to call, and it was without any opposition. Also, the number of residents on the teams that have been working on passing these measures has diminished in size, and the results show it. Residents are tired of working on these parcel taxes and trying to pass them every four years. So do not put off to tomorrow, or next year, or the year after. Get going now on providing long-term solutions to the adequate funding of Atherton operations and, and infrastructure needs. Always there are about 20% of the voters who will vote no on any, any fiscal number. The recent parcel taxes have been passed with decreasing majorities, and you're running out of oarsmen to row your parcel tax boat, boat over the finish line. So please get going now on alternate funding. funding. No more parcel taxes. There has to be a better way. Please find it. Now Measure X has given you the time and the money to do so, and please use both wisely. Thank you. Any other public comments? Seeing none, we're going to go ahead and close the public comments. Uh, we have nothing to report on closed session. Item number, <laughs> item number six, city manager report. Do you have the city manager's written report? Take any questions? Any council members? Um, I've got, uh, I guess, just a couple comments. Um, there was the uh, discussion on the uh, CCAC that uh, George wrote up, and he and I spoke about this briefly, but I indicated I would bring this up. Um, I, I applaud all the activity that's gone on with uh, making sure all the costs are scrubbed and things like that. Um, I'm concerned a little bit uh, based on the ballot measure that passed about uh, not using uh, taxpayer dollars other than the funds that we have in the building department and obviously the library is separate but um, when we were doing the library we were very diligent in making sure any time we spent any minute whatsoever uh, from any of the staff, including our contract staff, that we charged it to the library fund. Um, and to date, uh, and it, according to the con conversation I had with, with the city manager, he's, his thought process is that we would continue until we get to the day that we're breaking ground and starting construction. We would use city staff and things like that, and that's contrary, I think, to the way we work the library. Um, so there's lots of ways we can handle that. I think that uh, it would be good if we could have a, a discussion amongst um, the council, perhaps in a study session, on, on uh, the rationale on all of this. Um, 
And you know, also if in fact we and we want to be consistent with how we're dealing with both the library as well as with the with the town center. Now, obviously, the um, the master plan was something separate, and that needed to be funded, and, and those funds adequately were paid for. But but uh, doing things like an EIR and soil samples and things like that, I think, are tantamount to actually starting construction, um, and are things that we did ask the library fund to pay for. So we could always look at <coughs> refunding the library fund, and then, of course, that would allow us to build a bigger community center and things like that, we might want to consider that, but I think those items need to be discussed. Also, um, on a, another section of the city manager's report, there was the discussion about um, the master plan for the park um, and how the master plan has already gone to the parks and rec and they're already looking at alternatives <coughs> and things like that. Um, I think it's, it's uh, unwise that the, the City Council doesn't have some input into looking at some of these things as we're moving forward, much the same as we did with the, with the Master Plan. While we do have these committees and they, they serve a very valuable for, portion uh, and function in, in our government, I do believe that what we need to do is we need to also allow the City Council, which has the ultimate authority, to weigh in on some of these things and then work in conjunction with these commissions. And so I would like to see that also on a, um, uh, a study session as early as possible before we have more input from Parks and Rec. We can't get the commissions and the committees getting ahead of the process. And also with regards to a Parks and Rec, the commission is one facet of, of a, ma a park master plan. The Dames play a, and the Hope of Palmer Park Foundation play a very important role in in deciding are we and where are we going to have a, a, a dog park, what are we going to do with some of the facilities there, etc. So um, I'd like to see a study session on both of these items as soon as possible. Thank you. So, can I just make a clarification? Can I ask a city attorney a clarification? Uh, it's my understanding that the Park and Rec is uh, an advisory commission. They're not going to make the final decisions. And all of this will ultimately come to the council for uh, review and debate and discussion uh, the entire package along with the recommendation that the Park and Rec Commission uh, prepares. Is, am I misunderstanding that? No, that's correct. Um, it is council prerogative if they want to somehow define the boundaries or parameters differently or better or ahead of time. Um, it's done both ways. It's really um, uh, up to the city council on how best to proceed, but it is within the purview of the Parks and Rec Committee to look at this, or commission, mm -hmm. uh, to look at this and to recommend back to you which way to go. Um, and, and I don't think there's any right or wrong way. It's up to however you want to do it. Yeah, it's my understanding that that's what the council told them to do. That was council's direction uh, initially, and then it would come back to us. Go ahead. The uh, park master plan and the bike, mas uh, bike and pedestrian master plan are scheduled for our study session the first Wednesday in April. Okay, and since Parks and Rec meets on Wednesday, right after that, perhaps what we could do, if we're going to be looking at this plan, we might want to have a joint session, as we've also done like with the CCAC. So I don't... You know, my comment, and don't take the comment wrong, but the comment is, is that bringing it to the final debate and final decision with the, I'm not saying that we don't have that authority. It just is, to me, it's a little bit late, and it causes potentially some harsh feelings. And so I think that we should have, you know, a, more of an open meeting, and, and, uh, and perhaps a joint meeting would be appropriate, but if you bring that on and let George consider that, I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions for the city manager? related to the city manager's report. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, community organization roundtable, we have none. Moving to the items that are on the consent agenda. The consent agenda is items number eight through 16. Any member of the public can pull an item from the consent agenda, any member of staff, and any member of the council. Any member of the public would like to pull any member uh, number 8 through 16 on the consent agenda. 
seeing none, any council member want to discuss or pull an item? I would like to um, talk about number 10 and also number 16. And that bill is uh, questions or one poll? Um, one is a request, number 16 and number 10. I just want to talk about just very briefly. It's, it's uh, we'll pull that. So we'll just. So on, on 16, I can bring that up real quick. Please. Um, I noticed that that project uh, does involve the um, refurbishment of and patching of the uh, walkway in the park that, that I spoke about a while ago. I did speak with the city manager, and while that, that is a very necessary thing, and I appreciate uh, getting on this list, I did speak with the city manager about extending that to go from where it curves right by the, uh, the tennis courts in that, in that corner that's near the railroad tracks, uh, and then um, run an additional path that would go back to that gate that is um, the safe routes to school. The reason I asked for that is that in the most recent rains, and I realize it doesn't rain here very often, but the kids still ride their bikes to schools, and I've, I observe personally, and you can see by the tracks in the mud, many of the kids have fallen riding on their bikes. They don't get off their bikes. Uh, and, and once it's muddy, they slip and slide. And it's not going to take too much to add uh, either uh, a, a small path so that they could ride their bikes to that, uh, to that gate. Um, George felt it would be minimal in cost, and I would hope that we could add that, and I appreciate any consideration on that. Yes, yeah, so that, that is not a problem um, to add that. In fact, this is the perfect time that the council wanted to, to add uh, things like that. Do we need a motion? Yeah, we're going to also need public input, so if you could do that. So why don't you pull that one off and then discuss it and make a motion if you want to do that. Okay, gotcha. Right. So we'll pull 16 and Bill will also pull 10. Uh, Councilman Boyd, anything you want? Yeah, Question? Um, I want to comment on item 14 which is the little league improvements at Holbrook Corner Park. And what I number want... 14? 14? Am I right? There's no instruction of public record. You're on number 8. Oh, number 8. Yeah. I think he's making clarification to the minutes. Yeah, I want to make a clarification to the minutes. Please do. Okay, sorry. Uh, so the motion that was passed included the following statement that the facility be constructed in a manner that is consistent with the historic character of the facilities in the park. And I want to clarify that staff will be uh, raising that specifically with the Little League uh, so that in the course of their working on their design that is presented to, through the planning and permitting process, uh, that staff uh, reviews it and confirms that it's within the historic character facilities in the park. And since the idea of what is the historic character of facilities in the park is uh, really a judgment call, I think that issue needs to come back to the council at the time that staff has confirmed that the league has uh, submitted plans in accordance with that. I think that's reasonable. I think that's the intent that, you know, the Little League uh, people were, that we haven't seen any true architectural renderings and it's their desire to uh, make the environment uh, look uh, Victorian historic, you know, as the park and not uh, ultra modern. So um, I think that, you know, I'm agree with that. So, um, I'd like to pull for discussion item number 11, 